How's everybody doing today? Today I'm going to do a video over jig fishing and just kind of the whole concept of about how I go uh, about fishing a jig and some tips and tricks kind of help you get started and just some things that I feel like no one ever really touches base on when it comes to jig fishing and just the stuff that you can do to kind of help improve the hookup ratio and the bite ratio and just the fishing experience itself in general just kind of walk you through exactly what you need to be doing and how you need to target things so let's get right into that I'm going to show you guys my two favorite jigs to be throwing pretty much all year long I switch up between the both or both of them so let me show you guys those real quick and then we'll go through the tips okay the first uh, jig that I use which is already tied on to the rod right now and that is the jewel jig this is a half ounce heavy cover finesse jig uh, it's a football style head the the top of the trailer is cut and trimmed down so it's got that more of a finesse type look to it and it's overall it's a very very small profile jig I mean the skirt is relatively I'll show you a new one real quick the skirt is already trimmed up so a lot of guys will tell you to trim the skirts up to about where the hook is I kind of like it a little bit past that trailer or that hook in general rule of thumb but if you need to you can trim them up so I normally, I just now started throwing around, this is the Table Rock Secret Color, and this is the PB&J, those are my two colors that I've been throwing right now, I've been killing them on the PB&J, so uh, it's kind of hard for me not to throw this jig. Uh, another jig that I throw around, that I have a few of, different colors, this is a half ounce, this one's a little bit smaller one, but these are half ounce uh, Junction Tackle Jigs, they're a local company right around me, so supporting local businesses uh, these are the jigs I throw these ones you can do a little bit more uh, stuff too you can trim them down they're a little bit long they're not too long and then you can also take their skirt as I'll show you right now to make a full size kind of more finesse type if you ever wanted to you could take your jig and separate it and trim down the head and kind of give it that more finesse look like that instead of the full cover jig it's a little bit more fuller this one's a little bit more open it's got a lot more uh, room to be able to see that crawdad trailer or whatever you're throwing on it all right coming to tip number two picking out a jig I use a half ounce jig just about every time that I'm throwing one it's gonna be a half ounce or bigger uh, I will switch down to a lighter one on certain stuff if I'm in a little bit more shallower water but normally I'm fishing anywhere from the bank to 25 foot so and that jig is I want it to fall down there as quick as possible but not too too fast so I'm kind of wanting that slower sink down there kind of as it comes up I can pop it real high and it will slowly flutter down so I will normally religiously throw a half ounce jig and I think that you should too because for one just a quick tip that I have learned with the live scope. And I know that everybody's got one, but if you throw this jig in 25 foot of water at a brush pile and you look at it and you don't have live scope and you sit there and just count down um, 10 seconds or however many seconds, you'll kind of get the hang of it. But if you will count down or watch your line, whenever it slacks, give it just a little bit more because uh, I have noticed whenever... I just blindly cast over at a brush pile in 25 foot of water. Normally I'll wait like 15 seconds and I'd be sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting and then I'd start working it. And you will literally be working that jig in 10 foot of water to 15 foot of water and it will not have fully made bottom contact. So remember that if you're not feeling bottom, nine out of 10 times you are not on bottom because you are either in a different part of the water column and you're just swimming it through it not saying you won't get a bite but the jig is more of uh, disturbing the bottom contact kind of bouncing off the rocks those fish are listening for that sound and that clunking when it comes across the rocks and then there's the debris that you're disturbing as the mud kind of moves out of the way the fish are honed in on that one little spot so I would throw a half ounce jig if I was you starting out with the jig all right let's talk about line size uh, normally I'm throwing 
at least 14 pound test. I believe this is 20, or no, this one, this, this is 14 pound test. This is FC Sniper. Uh, I use all kinds of different brands. I don't use, not really using one certain brand. So this is a 14 pound line all the way up to 20 pound line. So I use 20 pound when I am fishing uh, more heavier cover stuff like brush piles and then grass and, and bigger chunk rock just for the main fact that whenever you're going through this, as I can feel right now, this needs to be retied because you will drag, and this one I threw the other day, and I will switch them from rod to rod and fish that way, but this one, I have fished and fished with rock or up against the bluffs uh, yesterday, and I can just feel the where the line has pulled across the rocks as that jig comes across the top. So. As you're thinking about that, this is I use straight fluorocarbon. So, a little bit of a demonstration. When that jig falls down, say you got a rock, that jig will fall down, and you're gonna pull that line across the top of that rock. So, hold on a second. All right, back to the video. Uh, but yeah, so that jig will run across the rock. So, a very very abrasive line would help out with that to an extent. Uh, you're still gonna get the phrase, but you're just gonna a jig fishing is one tip or another little tip i'll tell you check your line every few casts make sure because you don't want to have a four or six plus pounder fight that jig and as soon as you set the hook he fights 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 and it snaps and it's more likely going to snap where those frays are so just remember that uh if you're having trouble breaking off <coughs> use a big a little bit bigger line and if the four so you might start at 14 if 14 is working good for you you're getting good hook sets on those fish and you're getting them to the boat i would just stick with 14 if you're having problems with uh, the jigs breaking off then go ahead and switch to 15 16 18 20 however, however much you need to do uh, but that's just another thing is line and uh, jig size so let's move on to the next tip all right now let's go over trailers as you can see, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I throw, 99% of the time, I will throw the speed curl. Uh, so that is what that one is. This is uh, just the regular size. This isn't the Magnum, but I just throw the minimum one. So I think it's like three inches long, but that is the jig trailer that I'm throwing. Uh, I normally just stick with green pumpkin. I'll, the, only, the reason why I do that is because I will take and buy a bunch of green pumpkins and then if I want to add dip and dye and sartreuse then I will dip the tails myself um, you can buy these curls already with orange curls and I believe blue curls I don't know about sartreuse but I I just buy dip and dye and I just dip them as I go along sometimes I don't dip the tails sometimes I do it just a kind of a thing if I'm catching a lot of fish on just the regular one I'll keep fishing it but if I'm catching them one here one there and they're not really biting it that good, I might dip the tails. If I start getting more bites, then I'm gonna keep dipping the tails. But I would buy uh, the half ounce uh, finesse tactical jig, or not the tactical jig, I think it's just the heavy cover uh, finesse jig. Those you can get in a two pack for about five to six bucks, depends on where you buy them at. But if you were to buy two packs, or the pack of those, and just get two jigs, I would definitely buy two packs of trailers, because you will run through trailers. Uh, sometimes you might, lose a pincher and you'll be left with one you can still fish this bait but i tend to rip the trailer off and fish with two pinchers i feel like it gives it more action but you can still get bit i've got bit before just trying to beat it as long as i could with the same trailer on so you can catch fish with just one pincher that is a fact but i believe it's more prone to get more bites if you have both pinchers on so I also use the Z curl. I do not have one in the boat. I think Strike King makes this one, and I believe this is the Rage Tail or Rage Crawl. Uh, that's also another jig trailer that I know a lot of guys throw, but I normally will throw the Z or the Zoom uh, Speed Crawl and the Z Crawl. So those are my two favorite trailers, and also I'm Dip and Die. And then I've been messing around with bait pop as well uh, I've also put the jig I've put my I've 
went ahead and put trailers on my jigs before and I've got these little Ziploc baggies and I will throw bait fuel in that baggie and I'll throw a few jigs in there. That way the whole jig just marinates in that bait fuel. Uh, I've caught fish with those, uh, caught fish with this and I think I got another one that I use the biffle juice, uh, bug juice and I catch fish with that scent too. So. Uh, I caught fish without scents. I don't think you have to have scent on your jigs, but uh, it's just another extra little deal to put on there to kind of, kind of help you get that extra bite. So uh, that's just a preference whether you want to use one or not. I can't say or will will say that it is a game changer because I caught a fish on the peanut butter and jelly jewel jig the other day, six pounder. Uh, I'll throw that clip of that video up right here. Dang. I think that's gonna be my biggest of the year. It's gonna put us some big weight chunk. But I caught that jig or that fish on that jig and it didn't have no scent and I believe it didn't have any dipped pinchers either. So and she weighed 619. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna switch to kind of show you exp or explain to you what I'm looking for when I'm fishing. Okay. When I am fishing uh, on like Lake Tanicomo, let's just use that for instance because that's what I've been fishing here lately, but we'll go over a couple other, or at least one more other lake because I have two different lakes that both are kind of a river system, or I guess they are river system lakes, uh, but on Tanicomo, when I'm fishing the jig, on that lake there's a lot of grass, so, and you'll have big clumps of grass that will wrap around a bank, and you'll have... Uh, separation between the grass line and the bank and then the grass line and deep water uh, sometimes the fish are positioned up on the back side from the bank to the grass line so I will throw those areas and then sometimes those fish are positioned in front of the grass line to deep water and they'll be tight tight up next to it so sometimes I will go uh, horizontally with the grass line and I'll take that jig cast it down through there and I will drag it along the edge of that grass, kind of just trying to mimic a, a crawled out out there that popped out of the grass and just moving back in it or travel down the edge of it. So uh, that is a, a tip I would say on Tanny Comb, that's how I'm fishing it. Uh, I'm also fishing it on bluffs. So I'm looking for contour lines that are really, really tight and they're dropping steep to deep water. I'm looking for those kind of contour lines on uh, your map. So if you're looking at your graph and you're trying to find stuff, find banks that are really really steep and they, and the contour line is really really tight dropping down uh, I'm fishing and most of the time I'm fishing vertically those those banks sometimes I'll fish them horizontally but uh, probably 60% of the time I'm going to be throwing them uh, vertical to the bank running down the bank and dragging it and normally fishing into 25 foot of water if you have live scope it can kind of help you I just use it to pan up and look and kind of see where I can see the fish positioned up on the bank if you don't have pan optics, uh, like I said in my previous video where I fished and caught a 20 pound bag on the jewel jig, just work the bank until you start getting uh, productive bites. So if you're fishing up there and you're getting bit on the bank, then keep keep beating the bank. But if you are having to work that jig out into that 15 to 20, 25 foot of water to get those bites, then continue fishing that, that, uh, that depth of water because there's no sense in just working a bank on the just working a bank and just go up there flipping the bank and that's you're just working five foot and leaving uh, if you're getting bit like that then do it if you're not fish deeper and try to find out where those fish are sitting up that day and sometimes in the morning they're gonna be up, up really really tight to the bank and sometimes in the afternoons they're gonna start pulling off to that little bit deeper water that Sun's popped out so they're gonna get in that little bit cooler thermocline uh, edge of the water so they're going to go a little bit deeper in a little bit darker shaded areas so it's just a kind of learn from fishing and feeling so that's my tip of on Tenny Como on Bull Shoals the same thing kind of just finding the tight 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 uh, banks and I think you can do that just about anywhere uh, I know there's a time and place whenever trees you can fish flooded trees and then there's a place for docks I, I fish docks I fish 
posts, uh, fish the floats. Uh, that's also a, a deal you can do with that lighter jig. That lighter jig, you can toss it up there and it sinks very, very slow. So it'll, it gives them, a, it's in that strike zone a little bit longer for them to kind of not want to have to pull off that float and they can just suck it down and go. That half ounce jig is going to fall a little bit faster and leave that strike zone just a little bit quicker. So, but that's all I have for how I'm really fishing. And that's me just breaking down a jig the best way I could possibly think of it. And I hope that some of these tips help you uh, getting better at jig fishing because I don't have very, very many, but I'm always losing them. So you will lose them, but I love jig fishing. I've been doing it uh, pretty much my whole life, but this is really my first year getting in my boat and going down the lake and finding new spots and learning how to fish it from the boat perspective. On the bank, uh, it's the same thing. Cast it out deep, kind of toss a turn, throw it out deep on the bank, and then when you're on the boat, throw it to the bank, working it out deep. So, And sometimes them fish, whenever you're in the boat, that's how they like it. Uh, they want it away from the bank. Sometimes if you're on the bank, they want it worked up the bank. So, Anyways, that is it for that. So let's move on to another topic for today's video. All right, sorry, I'm trying to make this as sweet, short, and simple as possible, but I'm trying to shove in all the little gooey details for you to kind of help you get better at the or on the water throwing a jig as best as I possibly can. Uh, I know you're gonna hear some of the stuff that you've heard from many, many other people, uh, but anyways. I think the the probably the biggest key is go through different colors half ounce jig if you're starting out just go buy a half ounce jig make sure you are on the bottom you're filling the cover as you're dragging the jig and set the hook on it I mean it's the bite is gonna be different uh, I've fished in its ticks and I fished and it's just they'll run with it and I fished and it's just kind of a, a mushy kind of pulling away from you almost feels like a branch if it's under the water and it's got you're pulling on it but it's kind of pulling back it's just, you'll it's just a feel game you'll learn over time what a bite is and what a tree is and drag it you'll be able to feel that line dragging over a rock over time and feel that jig kind of pull pull and then the jig can make connection to the rock I mean you'll feel just so much more and you'll kind of understand and then you can kind of put that in perspective of visual what you're kind of feeling under the water what you're seeing what you might oh there's a rock right here and you might hop it and get the flutter down maybe there's a fish right next to it and it sucks it so but those are the biggest tips that I have to give for you uh, but also wanted to say thank you guys so much we finally hit 100 subscribers that's a big accomplishment for me uh, I just because I've done it so quickly uh, so if you are subscribed I want you to drop a comment below of your biggest fish your favorite jig your favorite lure uh, just anything drop a comment below and then head over to Facebook and look at my Facebook page I'm gonna post a video over there uh, I want you to share that video and yeah share that video and tag three buddies in it and you'll be entered into a giveaway I believe we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna do if you're a local because I know a lot of you viewers that are watching are gonna be a little bit local to me and some of you that aren't I have another option for you but I'm gonna be giving away a $50 uh, gift certificate to the Junction tackle shop so I mean you can go pick you up a bunch of the Junction tackle jigs and some trailers to go with it or you can take $50 PayPal, I'll PayPal if you want PayPal, and if you just want cash to go spend it someplace else. But if you are local and you want to get the $50 Junction Tackle gift card or certificate, then you can get that. So those are the two options I have is going to be one winner. I'm going to post this video and share it to my page on Facebook. So be a subscriber, tag three buddies in the comments on the original post and then share the video and that's how you're entered to win so thank you guys for watching so much i uh, hope you learned something today as i went over kind of explaining how i'm jig fishing and what i'm doing so 
Uh, if you would, please like the video, hit that subscribe button so you can get entered into this giveaway and win 50 bucks. It could be anybody. We're going to do a drawing. I'm going to spin a wheel. We're going to do it live on Facebook, my Facebook page. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.